cubicle. There's a there's a oh sorry. There's um there's a cubicle in the in the bar I used to work in in Southampton called Jester's, and um, in the girls' toilet for some reason there's a cubicle with two toilets. I think they've caught on to the fact that girls like to go to the toilet together, but the lines are always so so long. So there's always that awkward moment when the girl in front of you who you don't know and and um, and you kind of go into the cubicle together and. Uh, <laughs> Kind of try to try to shield your eyes as the other girls go to the toilet. So yeah, that's that's another experience. And so I was. Um, it was dirt. It was all dirt, but probably also feces and piss on the floor. And before I went in, they said take off your shoes, and I was like, okay, I'll take off my shoes. That that was the custom. Take off your shoes to go in there. And it was really disgusting, and all I kept thinking was, I just want my shoes on, because I would rather get this on my shoes than on my feet. But for them, I guess it was the other way around. They would rather get it on their feet than on their shoes. Because for me, it's I can just wash my shoes, but this is my actual skin. I was actually with a tourist group, and we were visiting the Tunisian desert, and there was at some point a salted lake. But the lake was at so much salt it looked like the desert. <laughs> you could you could walk on it as if you were Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> and I saw toilets that I could swear were this ones. Might be, might not be, but they looked very similar. I just think that it was in very was toilet confort normal, meaning toilets normal comfort. And I was like, what the hell is this? First of all, where are they toilets in the middle of nowhere? Second of all. Why the hell do they have to specify that the comfort is of normal standards? <laughs> like, are, are there other toilets than, than like some very crappy toilets and these ones are the, the, the normal version? And then you've got the deluxe version, you know, like toilets, extraordinary comfort, where it, it cleans you after you've done what you had to. <laughs> Auto clean mode. I was on an overnight train between um, Sofia in Bulgaria and Istanbul in Turkey, and it was quite a nice train generally, nice beds, quite comfy. Um, about midnight, I decided I'd go to the toilet, it was really dark, um, and the only toilet on the train, on a moving train, was a squat toilet. Um, which was pretty dreadful and it stank as well. There was no flushing mechanism, it just went straight through to the track. So I didn't go to the toilet. <laughs> and then I was, I, was, I was pacing up and down, didn't know what to do, didn't know what to do. I went back, told my, told my friend who I was with, uh, she didn't know what to do. She was like, I'm not going to use it. But I, really, I, but I need to go to the toilet, what are we going to do? Um, and it was, just, it was just really, really awful. And we went to the next carriage and they didn't have one. Um, and then at about, I think we, we went to the border and, and at the border at one point, someone else in the train was like, oh, you know, there's just like a normal toilet at the other end of the train and we'd spent like three hours absolutely desperate for the toilet okay okay so i'm coming at this from french travel writing um, there's an image on the other side of the portaloo which looks at uh, French depictions of the English after dinner, um, a lot of drunkenness, um, bawdiness, uh, not taking any interest in women, also a love of horses instead. Um, there are also there are other um, images here that are relevant to what I do as well. Um, um, toilets in the Middle East are basically a hole in the ground and you have a little vase that you use. Um, so I live in Milton Keynes and um, when I was younger there was um, a Bon Jovi concert at the MK Bowl, uh, which is a big green area, um, and my friends and I, because we're cheap, uh, sit outside <laughs> and listen to the music. Um, and there was this pub nearby where we were sitting and there were bushes all outside um, and the pub was closed. So all the girls, um, anyone who was sitting around, uh, went to this one bush to, to, um, to go to the toilet. Um, the men all went anywhere, but the, all of the women went to this one bush and they'd actually queue to go into this one bush, even though there were, there were bushes all around, they could have gone anywhere. <laughs> they queued to all use this one and they, like, they sat in a line and, <laughs> and went to the toilet like, the, like it was cubicles. But the most terrible experience was in a um, shop and also in a very interesting turning around restaurant in Shenzhen when you had to pay a lot of money to go to see the landscape and everything where they have again this type of toilet but in the fair it was actually just a trench 
<laughs> with some <laughs> partitions between and you can have a nice conversation with your neighbor <laughs> and a school teacher told me that in schools it's the same type of loo and it's very difficult for them to go to the toilet during the breaks because the children are saying hi mrs <laughs> her name anyway how are you <laughs> and you see everything and sometimes when you are going to this type of loo you see only a newspaper and with some hands because the women used to read the newspaper standing on that loo in 2007 at reading festival um my sister's friend got very, very drunk and uh, we decided that she sort of needed to try and vomit. So we took her to the portaloos and we put her in one and we didn't lock the door just in case. Uh, and then everyone else went to the loo and we came back and we stood outside waiting. Uh, and we continued to wait and continued to wait and someone knocked on the door. Nothing came, so we decided to open the door and she barreled out of it and went, oh my god, it was horrendous, and grabbed my sister in a sort of hug, and then let go of her, and then just started running, and we were sort of like, what's going on? And my sister turned around, and she had a perfect poo handprint on her back, and this girl had fallen into the loo uh, in her drunkenness. Long and interesting story begins when I was in King's Cross at the big chill bar one night, and all my friends went somewhere else and I was left there on my own. And I was a, bit, a little bit drunk, so I decided to walk it off by walking home from King's Cross to Holloway, which is like half an hour walk. So I started walking up like York Way, where all that new construction site is, you know, around there. And I was, I was a little bit drunk, so I decided to go and have a look around the new construction site, which involved hopping over a fence and dodging past the little sleeping security guard. <laughs> and then as I was wandering around, it's like in the bit behind where St. Martin's is, if you know where that is. Um, I was also drinking a beer and I started to feel a bit ill, <laughs> um, so I had to poo <laughs> in the middle of this construction site behind St Martin's. Uh, because I was lacking toilet paper and feeling quite ill, I had to use my boxer shorts and leave them in the middle of this construction site. So there was this one time when I was travelling in Tanzania and I went to stay at a little eco lodge on an island just off the coastline. And we, and it was very, and it was a very lovely place and so on, and ama you know, amazing beaches. And we went, each one had a little condo, and so we went inside and so on. And you know, eventually, someone needs to use the toilet, and so we went through, we went through this doorway. And inside the doorway wasn't the usual kind of Western style toilet, which we're assuming from somewhere which is actually pretty nice and fairly expensive. But it was a raised seat with a hole cut in, with a rock, with a hole cut into it and a hole in the floor. And when he sat down, there was actually just the sound of rushing water. And I'm like, this is a bit strange, but kind of just like, it just kind of seemed to drop into a pit full of rushing water. And we ended up asking, asking about this later, and it turns out that actually the toilet feeds directly into the sea. And my most fascinating story about Luz is from China, where I've been two years ago. I have... Uh, so, I've seen the different types of loo and I was very surprised that in a five-star hotel when I arrived the toilet was like a Turkish one, if you know how is it, without a chair, just a hole, which actually it's a very healthy type of toilet, apparently, but it was surprising that in a five-star hotel you can find something that. So, when I was about five uh, in West Wales, um, we were out playing in like our tree house and then obviously the moment came and I needed to go. So, um, I decided just to, you know, go in some bushes, because you do when you're six. And um, so, you know, squatted down, did my business, stood up and I had sting, nettle stings all over my bottom. <laughs> The only toilet experience I can think of right now is um, a weird toilet experience but it was kind of self-inflicted because when I was six um, I used to live in Argentina and my friend and I at school for no reason um, used to share the toilet when we both needed to go to the toilet we'd both sit on it. <laughs> And there'd be ones free, you know, it was, it was completely out of choice, but it was, a, it was a weird bonding experience for us. When I spent uh, nine months in France, and one of the things that struck me was that a lot of the restaurants don't actually have loos in them. 
um, which I think is actually law over here. Um, and that idea of the sort of shabby, chic Frenchness, I think you also see even in restaurants that do have loos. And then when I think of restaurants in London, um, I actually often uh, rate a restaurant on how nice the loos are, which is a little bit odd perhaps, but if I'm going to sort of give a recommendation of nice loos to go to, um, I'd say probably the hotel in um, St Pancras, if you, you get to walk through the old booking office and go through to the loos, and apparently the men's loos, I can't speak from experience, but they have Shostakovich playing in them. Um, I did set up my library in the toilet in Rotterdam last year. Really? Mm. That's a great need for reading material. Oh yeah. Wait, that's I was why, actually I was in the cubicle, so people came in the loo, and then I had probably 50% open the door and went, oh I'm sorry, and closed the door. And then the other 50% opened the door, read my sign, which said Free Poetry Library, and went, oh yes, I'd like to join, yeah. Did they sit in there? And, well, there was no seatage because uh, the library was on the, the toilet seat. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but they filled that card and then they went and stood in the queue with them to Warren. Wow! Um, is it true that if you are pregnant and you absolutely need to go, you can actually ask a policeman to hand over his hat? We were in a building at UCL that I've never been in before. It was close to the Brunswick Center, and I'm a gender historian, and I'm used to like talking about gender and talking about these things. And I always liked the idea of gender-neutral toilets. I've never actually experienced one before. And then at this building at UCL, there was a gender gender-neutral toilet and I, I walked in there and I saw some of my male classmates and I turned around so fast it was like I had whiplash to check the door to make sure I wasn't in the wrong toilet and then it was the most awkward experience they were uncomfortable that I was there I was uncomfortable that they were there we we're chatting about the presentations like you know we were around the water cooler or something and then I kind of just said okay well I'm gonna go in that room now, not wanting to say I'm going to go in the stall and use a toilet, and it was, I just didn't like that they were there, and it just was an uncomfortable experience for me, but now they think about it, I think if, we, if it was more common, it wouldn't be uncomfortable, it was just the kind of newness of the whole experience, and I do think that UCL should have more gender-neutral gender toilets, but I think that people need to have more awareness of them and get more comfortable using them. Uh, well, I was uh, on holiday with a couple of friends in Italy and we went to a place where the only female, the only toilet facilities at all I think, I think there might have been a male urinal, but the only toilet facilities for females were, was a female urinal, which is basically a porcelain square with a hole in it and two sort of, um, on the floor, with two texture bits for your fit feet to go on so you have grip so that you can squat. Um, I used to go to Egypt when I was little. The toilets aren't normal toilets. You basically have to toilet. You have to go to the toilet in the floor, so it's like a hole in the ground.